Okay, we're looking at Mr. Ridley's product design and we're looking today at personal music players. So we're going to look at the history of personal music players. Um, the four music players we're going to look at are firstly Sony Walkman, then Sony Discman, iPod G1, which was the first iPod, and iPod Touch. Okay, so let's look at the Sony Walkman. The Sony Walkman, um, the prototype was built in 1978. It was um, constructed for the then Sony chairman who wanted to be able to listen to operas. He flew across the Pacific a lot, backwards and forwards from uh, Japan to America, and he wanted to listen to opera music in his own space. And that was really the first personal music player, really, ever. The Walkman, then, when it was launched, created a new market for personal music players. But before this, people hadn't been able to have their own soundtrack to their lives to listen to personal music. It, it was something that just hadn't been available. You had to listen to music on a, a small radio, and the people around you would hear it also. One of the drawbacks was the Walkman used cassette tapes. These were magnetic tape. Um, these used magnetic tape, and the music was stored in an analog format. So it was encoded in magnetic particles on the tape and the um, wheels here turned, fed the tape through. But the downside of magnetic tape cassettes is they had a limited life. So the, the um, tape was actually moving forwards, wearing, and after which, when they, they reached the end of their life, the tape actually wore, wore out. So that was a big problem with tapes. So overall, the Sony Walkman played cassette tapes. The music was stored on a magnetic tape in an analog format, and the tracks could only be listened to in sequence. So you had really quite basic controls. You could move the, you could listen to a track. You could skip a track or two tracks, but you couldn't listen to the tracks out of sequence. And the replaceable, it had four AAA batteries, or AA batteries, which had a relatively short life. If you played it for a few hours a day they were worn out you had to buy new batteries so that was the downside of the Sony Walkman the technology there the next product that was launched um, was the Sony Discman now this used digital this used a compact disc um, so uh, Sony produced the Discman and this used the newly available media of compact discs or CDs these had been developed by Sony and Philips in the 1980s. Now, the difference between those and the tapes, A, they didn't wear out, so they had a much longer life, and B, the music was encoded digitally. The Sony Discman, the original design specification for the Discman set by Sony was that it should be the size of no fill bigger than four CD cases. So this was the actual size that they planned. They said they didn't want the, the player to be any bigger than that. Um, the spin-off development of this was the price, because they, they used a lot of development to de deliver this player, and um, the, they were able to make a smaller, cheaper CD player unit, and the, the cost of c CD players and the cost of CD players from other manufacturers dropped, and that meant that more people bought uh, CDs, more artists were available on CDs, and the whole CD market really kicked off. So the Sony Discman really kicked off the market for CDs as media. The next player we're looking at is the iPod G1. So um, Jonathan Ives was a designer at Apple, who were, at that time Apple were a computer manufacturer. They made computers. His team had discovered previously a 1.8 inch um, here. So this is a 1.8 inch um, across uh, Toshiba hard drive. And they realized this hard drive, there's the size of it there against the battery. They realized this hard drive could be utilized as a storage for a music player. So they already had this interface and Ives' team made this iPod G1, which was the first um, music player of its type really with, with a, a, such a good interface. Um, the latest iPod now, moving on to the latest iPod, doesn't use a hard drive. It uses solid state flash memory modules, basically just big integrated circuits. Um, the latest chips available for these, they, um, they're now 
they've increasing the size all the time. So the 128 gigabyte iPod is, is not far off now with those. Um, one of the technological features of the iPod Touch is the, the, the advanced touch screen. Um, the way it's set up with these um, different lines, sensing lines and driving lines, means that it can register up to three points of contact. This means that ergonomically documents can be open or closed using finger movements and that makes for a, a really nice ergonomic interface. The iPod Touch also has um, a whole load of hardware um, electronics built into it. So it has a proximity sensor, an ambient light sensor, an accelerometer, a magnometer and a gyroscopic sensor. And this uses these um, apps can access these hardware functions and um, using the magnometer and the gyroscopic sensor and make things like driving games where you can tilt the phone. So it's using those features. So that was Mr. Riley's product design and that was personal music players. <laughs>